Welcome again, and yes, there's still more. Uh, this time we have Vivek Raya, Raya, who is going to be talking about literal text translation and audio synthesis using AI services. Um, have you ever wanted to read your favorite book or poetry, but language is a barrier? Worry not, uh, because uh, the uh, the word of the literature in your preferred languages, along with the audiobooks, with just a click of a button, is possible. And Raya is going to be talking about how we can uh, accomplish that. About the speaker, uh, Vivek Raya is working as a data science in Next Steam organizer. Uh, and he's also an organizer of the Azure Developer User Group in Tamil Nadu. Uh, that's in India. He's also an AWS community builder for machine learning, Microsoft certified, Azure data scientist, AI engineer, data engineer, and also a developer associate. Besides that, he also loves to mentor hackathon teams, blogging and speaking at various developer group in the field of AI and cloud. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Vivek, and the stage is all yours. Awesome. Thank you for an amazing intro. And hello, everyone. Welcome to today's session, Literature Text Translation and Audio Synthesis Using AI Services. So hopefully, you're having a warm and good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you're currently from. So yep. Hi, I'm Vivek, and I'm working as data scientist at Nextem. And I'm a lead at Azure Developer Communities in India, and I'm AWS Machine Learning Hero. So let's take a quick glimpse of today's talk. So um, there are a lot of text and literature texts in and around the world. And um, there might be some text or poetry which you really wanted to read, but the language might be a barrier. So that was the exact reason why we have a, a, an open source project called Literature Love, which we created uh, a couple of months back. And that uses AI services to generate and translate uh, or, uh, books in your preferred languages and also synthesize audio for the same. So just a quick, again, a quick intro about me. So I'm from India and I'm, I'm working as a data scientist at Nextem. And in Nextem, we build amazing uh, brain computer interfacing technologies and stuff. I'm also a Guinness World Record holder for uh, largest bug fixing challenge. I was part of it and uh, obtained it in 2021. And I'm currently working, uh, uh, besides all my professional work, I have a, a immense love and passion for communities. So I'm organizer at Azure Developer Communities in India, which has around more than 10K members. And we conduct sessions, uh, bringing in speakers from all around the world. And I'm also an AWS machine learning hero, and I'm a multi-cloud certified, and I'm, I have obtained certificates from uh, Microsoft Azure, uh, Oracle Cloud, and Alibaba Cloud, and et cetera. So uh, besides all, everything else, I love to participate in hackathons, and uh, I was a 20 times international hackathon winner. And currently, like right right now, I am transitioning my role from a participant to a mentor and technical judge. So uh, in, to my research fields, I have published over for five research papers, and one of the patterns is currently in place. And I'm also an active speaker, mentor, and blogger. You can check out my dev and medium blogs, and also an open source contributor. And this is my GitHub link. So today's session, uh, I want you all to sit back and enjoy today's session. So uh, it's a very, very beginner friendly session. And uh, hopefully uh, everyone has a very, very basic knowledge of Python. But if you're new to Python, it doesn't matter. So because we have all the code samples available today, so you can experiment it after the session is over. And also a basic understanding of machine learning would be really helpful. But if you do not, if you're very new to machine learning, so worry not, this is, this is very beginner friendly and you can still pick up. And of course, uh, what I really, uh, uh, this is the third and main prerequisite, which I always prefer in all the sessions. If you have a very curious mind to learn, you can actually break into any technologies which you like. So if you're interested for today's session, you can actually recreate or contribute to a literature level project at the end of today's session. So uh, the agenda of today's talk will be like, we'll be first introducing about what is literature love and what does that open source project really mean? What's the inspiration, source of inspiration behind it, and what, what is the progress so far? Then we will touch down on a little bit of technical concepts like Azure Cognitive Services, which we have been extensively used in this project to accomplish our objectives. And that will go on about uh, uh, presenting the solution architecture for the project 
and also the technical concepts of how to implement the uh, uh, the, the translation and the audio synthesis. And finally, I will also explain you a couple of easy steps where you can host your uh, uh, any website in within, within a couple of minutes, and that's using Azure. So that will uh, that will be uh, one of the easiest way. And you, if you are really not uh, uh, very new to hosting websites, this is will be a piece of cake for you. And at the last, we'll be also having a literature text contribution collaboration where I'll be introducing you how you can contribute to this particular open source project. So yeah, so uh, good morning. And uh, once again, uh, let me also introduce to the literature love, which we have named this as the open source project. So it was an, uh, an open source initiative where we uh, invite every single literature lover and authors all around the world to contribute. So what we actually do here is we initiate, uh, uh, we, uh, uh, you know, we actually help people to read, listen, and enjoy literature texts poems, novels, short stories, in whatever preferred language you speak. For example, I'm a, a native speaker of a language called Tamil and I do speak English and I do uh, know a little bit of French. So, but uh, of course, if I do really need to read a, a poem which is written in German uh, and that's very difficult. So uh, that's where this literature love jumps into the picture. So you can read all your uh, uh, literature texts in your preferred language and the audiobook can be generated within just one click of a button. So if we want to break down this project into three main features, I would say that would be uh, uh, translate, text to speech and learn and contribute. So coming to the first feature is where we actually translate the literature text into your preferred language. So for this way, we use something called Azure Cognitive Service, which is a pre-built uh, AI service, and we'll be using something called Translate API. And the second one is about the audiobook. So to generate the audiobooks for your preferred uh, language, for your preferred text, so that's why we use uh, uh, an API service called uh, Text-to-Speech uh, uh, API Service from Azure Cognitive Service. And the third one is the most important, and the, the, the feature which I love the most about this project is about how everyone can learn and contribute to this particular project. So this uh, op uh, this uh, code is actually open source and uh, you can also contribute in forms of text or as a web developer or as an AI engineer as well. So let me uh, walk you through a bit of a, 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 a story behind how this actually the project uh, came into life. So uh, myself, who is from India, so India is a very diverse uh, uh, country with a lot of languages and cultures and so on. So. And uh, India has a very, very deep root of literature which from, uh, from ancient times. So if we, uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a native speaker of a language called Tamil. So Tamil is one of the oldest languages which is uh, still uh, spoken. So, and I do really love to read a literature text which is written in language Tamil. So um, I'm basically from South of India um, and this language is predominantly spoken over here. Whereas Hindi, which you might be also aware of is predominantly speaking in North of India. So I do have a lot of friends from North of India where they actually share me uh, uh, poems and everything written in Hindi. But I do have a really hard time to understand what's written. And like, uh, vice versa, I do love to share what the literature text which is written from Tamil. So uh, we used to spend a lot of time to translate that uh, into uh, written in, in form of, to translate the text which is written in Tamil to English and Hindi to English so that we can all actually can get to know about what, what is actually written. So that's where the spark of this uh, project came into picture. So I wanted to create a platform where people can contribute the text which they really love and that will help them to translate into any preferred language for which the people can go and pick up and read the, the text. And of course, um, there was also a constraint where the people just don't really like to read about the text, but they love to read also listen to the text. So that's where the audiobooks come, came into the picture. So uh, the audiobooks were also generated along with the preferred language which they wanted to do it. So that's how this literature love uh, project came into life. So this website is actually live right now and you can go and visit this uh, website URL bit.ly slash Azure, right? So it's A-Z-U-R-I-T-E-S. 
And this source code is publicly available right now in my GitHub account called Vivek0712 under the repository by Cascades. So that will be the, the most recent repository which I've been created and you can have a take a look at that. So um, this is a place where we bring all the literature lovers to contribute, read, well, uh, read, listen, and the literature text translated into various languages and also audiobooks generated for the same. So now that we actually know about uh, why we have uh, an open source project called Literature Love and why it was actually started and how it's really helpful, now it's time to, take, uh, uh, to get down into technical details of it. So before uh, getting to know about the technical details, I wanted to actually discuss a couple of concepts called uh, Azure Cognitive Services. So Azure Cognitive Services is about bringing AI to every single person and developers. So there, uh, for example, uh, uh, a full stack developer might not really know about machine learning or, uh, or maybe an API developer does not really necessarily know about uh, the concepts of machine learning and to create a machine learning model. So that's how this Azure Cognitive Service comes into the picture. These are uh, AI services which is pre-built and given in the form of APIs and SDKs which you can seamlessly integrate with your applications and that will provide you the necessary objectives with a decent score of accuracy. So if you break down the benefits of the cognitive services, it can be break down into three. So which I say, right, uh, we can use highly customizable and pre-trained models. So the way which, the way they say it's customizable is in the sense, there is a lot of parameters that you can uh, play with that will give you the personalized way of creating an AI application uh, that can be integrated with, with your uh, core application as well. And the models have been already pre-trained and it has a very, very good, decent accuracy that you can, uh, uh, that you can always rely upon. And that will help you to achieve the objectives which you are looking for. And the second one is deploying the cognitive services anywhere with, with, uh, uh, to the edge with the containers. So which means you can deploy your cognitive services easily and it's and also you can easily call those cognitive services with just an api call and also uh, this uh, cognitive services is uh, uh, also follows uh, the ethical principles of responsible and fair use of ai and that follows a lot of industry level guidelines to make sure that all your ai applications fall under ethical guidelines as well so now let's start building. Uh, 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 I will also walk you through how we build a literature law website, and it's pretty simple as as, as it looks. So to get, really get started with this, uh, uh, what you really need to know about is uh, uh, basic HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So which we'll be using to that to create a website and Azure account. The reason why we need Azure account is that uh, we need to host our website in Azure, and the second one is to use the cognitive services available in Azure to do that. So uh, we'll be using a very basic static website, uh, which is nothing built up, built using many large AS and very, very, very basic uh, tech stack of web development. And the Microsoft services, which we'll be using is Azure static web app service and the cognitive services of translated and text to speech. So let me walk you through the architecture of this particular project. So, uh, We'll be using a, a transcript script, which will actually get the, uh, the literature text. For example, we'll be using something called uh, a Thirukural, which is actually an ancient uh, literature text written in the language Tamil. So there is an API which is already available to fetch you the text for that. So we'll be using that uh, Thirukural API, and we'll be using that uh, uh, to read that uh, all the, uh, the Kurals, which we call as couplets in, in, in English, and that will be used to translate all the text uh, to your preferred language. So once we actually uh, 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 translate on the text, we dump it into a file, and then uh, we'll be hosting our website where we'll be actually reading that file and display the the, uh, the couplets in, in the website. And now comes the application of audiobooks, where we'll be actually using uh, uh, audiobooks called uh, uh, from uh, Azure uh, text to speech, and that will pick up the text and read it for aloud for you. So that's a whole architecture and it's a very simple architecture, but it's quite powerful. So I uh, already mentioned about something called uh, uh, a literature text called Thirukural. So which is actually a classic Tamil language, uh, which was written in, in, in uh, 4 BC. So it's a very, very old literature text. It has around got uh, around 1330 couplets and each actually signifies the way how you should live your life or uh, how you should lead your life in a better way. So 
So that's a whole, uh, it's about a whole 1330 quarrels or couplets which we say about. So we will say first pick out all the, uh, the couplets and then feed it to the translator and get all the translated text. And then we will feed that to the text to speech API to get the audiobooks out of the same. So that's the whole uh, the approach which we are going to follow. So let's get started. So first you have to get to your Azure portal. So if you don't really have a Microsoft Azure account, you can create one for free. And once you uh, have your Azure account, go to and create a new resource called Cognitive Service. So all the relevant details have been, uh, uh, has been uh, mentioned in that particular link, but I'll just walk you through for easy convenience. So once the resource is created, so you will have something called resource management where you can go and access endpoints. So this, this endpoint key is must for us to, to, uh, uh, to call our translators and all the APIs for authentication. So once you actually create a resource and go to the keys, uh, you'll have something like this. So we have something called an endpoint and a key. So which we'll be calling that to uh, to interact with the Azure Cognitive Services for that for the sale. And the first one is about Translate API. So Translate API is where we use to translate from our preferred language to uh, uh, from from the original language, which is Tamil, to to preferred languages. So let me just walk you through the easy uh, the the code which is which which is available right now. So. Uh, we are going to use uh, three parameters here. So one is the API version, which is 3.0. So that's a default one. And also from represents which language you want to do really tra uh, translate from. So this is Tamil, so, uh, which is represented by a two digit code, uh, a two alphabet code called TA. And I want to translate that to two languages, which is uh, English and Hindi. So once that is done, uh, uh, all you have to do is Call this uh, API, and you have to pass your text. So, and with with passing the text, you'll be receiving a response with uh, two languages, both English and Hindi, which you can really uh, uh, translate the entire text which you wanted to do so. So, uh, to summarize, what we are going to do with the Translate API is that uh, uh, we are going to uh, call the Translate API using the Python SDK. And the whole data will be dumped into a JSON file, which will be put into a GitHub repo so that this translated text is publicly available for people to use in their own applications in future, because they don't, they don't really have to depend on translate in, in future uh, uh, for the same. And once that is done, we can also use the same uh, JSON file, uh, which contains a translated text to do the audio synthesis as well. So the second step is to create the audio synthesis for the text translations. So now that we actually have all the uh, translated text in, in a JSON file, so what you have to do is just import the file using your, your JavaScript code and then invoke uh, uh, the text-to-speech API from Azure Cognitive Services. So um, I'll just use a, 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 a script that will uh, import the Azure speech API through CDN. And then we'll be actually performing uh, uh, the audiobook using something called speech synthesis markup language. So the speech synthesis markup language is nothing but it defines how do you want to pronounce or uh, dictate your text. For example, what language or the voice do you want to really use? Do you want to have uh, uh, the speed of this, uh, uh, the text to be lower to, uh, uh, for example, to 0.5x speed, or do you want to increase the speed to 1.5x speed? Or do you want to use your uh, phonetic uh, uh, help as well to, to make the language dictate in a more uh, human-friendly way? So this is where you can actually have the freedom to uh, change and the standard voice and language for the same. So the first thing is you have to insert your subscription key and your location. For example, the location is East US, if you have noticed a while uh, generating the key as well, and then what I'm actually doing is for the for the uh, Quirrell, I'm actually you able I'm going to use a uh, TA which represents uh, Tamil and IN represents India and Indian language. So and Valuver is actually the name uh, of the speech audio. So and the language actually actually represents TA uh, IN. And for the English, I'm going to use an Indian version of uh, uh, Indian English and the audio uh, voice name is called Hira. And for the Hindi, I'm going to use a, a, a voice name called Kalpana. So these are the three different voices which I'm really wanted to use to make sure that uh, that looks lively and human friendly. 
So now that we actually have a translated text and we have a code that actually generates an audio for the same, now it's the right time for us to deploy the whole application into Azure. So uh, I really understand that uh, most of the people won't be actually falling into DevOps. And there is a very uh, big myth when I actually, uh, uh, which revolves around the deployment. That deployment is a very, very difficult and a hectic task. And it involves a lot of uh, minute uh, attention details that you have to uh, give your uh, consideration to. And it's only performed by a specific people and not everyone can do it. But that's all the myth. So the fact is, uh, the Azure Static Web Services actually helps you to set up the CI/CD pipeline for your web app and also deploy your web, web app in just five simple steps. So the reason why we are going with the Static Web App Service is that we are only using a static website, which is actually consisting of HTML, CSS, and JS files. So that uh, th this will uh, help us to deploy. But if you do have any uh, uh, framework-related web application like uh, REST or uh, uh, a command or uh, a mean stack, then you have to go for a service called Azure Web App Service instead of static. So the five steps to deploy your application is to first create a, a repository in GitHub or any other uh, uh, open source GitHub, or you can also opt for Azure repos. And then you can just push all your source file over there. And then second step is to go to Azure portal and go to your Azure static web app service and then click create. So enter all the relevant details like name of your application and so and so, and then uh, sign up with your GitHub account so that you will be able to access all the repositories of your GitHub account. So then uh, select your repository where you have actually uploaded all your source files and also select the branch which you want to deploy. Obviously, uh, you can keep it as main. So, and uh, once you click create, your application will be deployed and you'll have something called an URL, which to be uh, so, uh, which you can access to, to access your website. So right now this website is actually live, which is actually uh, uh, mapped to uh, the website URL, which I earlier shared with you. It's bit.li slash Azure rights. So that you can go and uh, check as well. So now that actually we have uh, deployed our web app service, which can actually translate and perform text to speech literature, and you can actually enjoy Tamil and English Hindi versions of the grid. I'd like to quickly show you, walk you through our website to make sure uh, that it's also uh, easy to, uh, to uh, show you as well. Uh, just give me a second on that. Yep, so this is the website uh, uh, called Azure Literature Lab. And this actually has a four, uh, 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 a community contributor text, which is Thirkral, which we actually see. And there is another Tamil literature called Atichuri, and it, is, it was uh, 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 actually contributed by one of our literature lovers. And the one, and there are a couple of uh, Victor Hugo uh, uh, poems as well. And there is a short story written by one of my friends who wants to publish that in my website as well. So you can just go uh, uh, read your, uh, your the preferred text and that will give you all the uh, relevant text in as well. So as you can see, this is uh, 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 has something called audio as well, and English and audio, which you can click and hear the same audio output. So going back to our presentation over here, so this is how you can actually uh, uh, translate your text and also uh, generate audio books for say. So Coming to the last part of today's session is like how you can actually contribute and collaborate with this uh, open source project. So if you are a literature lover then, and you want to uh, really contribute as a, a original text of literature, then you can just uh, sign up using this form. This uh, uh, form and all the relevant details is available in my uh, GitHub repo. So you can check it out later as well. So uh, you can just uh, drop all the files which uh, uh, which you like to, to get translated. So uh, we will take care of the translation part. And as a reader, if you really want to read some text uh, and that is not available in our website, you can just drop a suggestion and we will get it for you as well. So as an API developer, how you can help us creating uh, uh, to uh, collaborate is that now the, that uh, text have been contributed uh, as files, you can uh, create a, a, an API server which will actually help us to fetch the text via an API. So we would like to really have a help of API developers to, uh, to translate all the text into a data source, which is accessed by an APIs. 
and as a web developer you know this is not really about uh, creating a website so uh, this is uh, only created using a very static and uh, static files so if you are really a web developer who want to love to contribute for this so you can help us by uh, uh, developing and improving our website using any tech stack and you are you can just uh, the open source code is already available you can just make a pull request and uh, we will love to really uh, see your version of the same latest love website and as a python and machine learning developer so currently we are using azure cognitive services and we would really like to use a uh, 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 self and custom made models which is hosted in azure so if you really like about uh, creating your own models for translation and your uh, audio synthesis i would really like to collaborate with you to develop the same and uh, and if you really have a uh, interest in the cloud so we can also discuss about how to deploy a machine learning model in the cloud as well so uh, as you can uh, as you had seen in the website so there were four texts which which was actually community contributed so myself and a person called chinme jain actually contributed the text for the tripura and dr mary pierre augustin uh, who is a head of french department who contributed all the victor hugo poems and mrs uh, vidya raghunath who is a hr at the uh, red hat uh, is a very avid reader of tamil literature and she contributed atichuli and one of my friend named hari arun who contributed his own short story called a girl i met so the references to today's talk is available over here and you can also check out the resources for today's talk uh, which is available in my github repo so which is vivek0712 and slash pycascades2022 so there you will find uh, the ppt uh, or the presentation slides as well as the link to the open source code and the all the necessary uh, links where you can contribute for the same and if you like to uh, connect with me i am available in linkedin and twitter so uh, i am vivek raja ps in linkedin and in github i am at vivek0712 and in twitter i am vivek raja007 so yep it sounds fancy like a james bond yep that i created it when i was a kid so uh, you can drop me a, a message request and i would really like to talk to you about this project or anything that fascinates about python or you can just drop me an email at vivekraj98 at gmail.com so thank you everyone for today's session and hope so this uh, open source project really inspired you to create your own open source project and also contribute to the world of literature thank you everyone um we want to say thank you thank you vivek uh, you this was a really good presentation and and also thank you for taking the time to teach us about the translate the translation uh, and audio synthesis with uh, using the ai services um our next presentation is going to be about test and classifiers um we will have a 15 actually we will have a 13 minutes break uh, so uh, we hope to see you all back at 4 30 p.m pacific time and also uh do not forget to check out the microsoft virtual booth right here in Venulus. again vivek thank you very much for the presentation and uh see you later yep thank you